Facebook. Yeah, social media, attention social media. conventions, and and uh, and festivals. festivals. But the thing is, be aggressive. And most people are like, "Well, oh, I tried that, but it didn't work." Well, did you go to every single con? Were you annoying? And I, <laughs> and I mean, you've got to be annoying. No, you're you right. That, that's absolutely correct. You you. It's not just approaching people and not just trying. It's annoying because sometimes they'll give you money just to get rid of you. And it's you guys have in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you sold five movies here. <laughs> I just walked up and they bought them. So it's like, I'm, I'm obviously doing something good. I've been here for 10 years promoting my movie before it was finished. And then now, this year, literally just this year, we got a limited theatrical release in Boston, um, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, St. Louis. and uh, Not St. Louis, I'm sorry, um, Kansas City. And uh, and it's out on Netflix and um, and on Amazon. It's it's being distributed by you know legi- legitimate distributor. So start promoting your movie as you're making it. Like make a website. Tell everyone you can. And on our level, if you just tell the guy next to you, you can do it. You know, you just keep doing it. And uh, if this is what you love to do, you'll do it. You know. On the way over here, when Tom and I were walking over, we were talking about I won't say who or what movie, but about a guy that. It's not very talented, and we, I can't believe the stuff he makes, but he gets movies sold and he keeps making them because he's annoying. You've seen it. Haven't you seen a movie like, how the hell did that get made? Yes, well, I've got this yeah. idea in my head. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, you may not be the person to go after money. I am not the personality type to ask for money. I'm, I'm terrible at it. I just feel like I'm just incredible. But I guarantee you, I've had guys work with me that can go out of that. i got a producer friend right now who's going after $32 million because he's that guy. Find the other half of your personality that can do that. They're out there. Also, are anybody anybody in here familiar with the 48-hour film project? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 48hourfilm.com, I think is what it is. Okay, if you really like this business and you really want to get into it more, go out for as many of those as you can. I love Red Bull. Offer, <laughs> offer the crew on those, whatever, because you will meet other filmmakers and you'll meet people that, that want to get into the business and you'll meet other people that have been in the business. That's how I met the UPM of The Signal. I met him on uh, working on one of the 48-hour film projects with him. So. They also turn out some fantastic stuff at the scramble. Yeah, they do. It was uh, the half half good story, right? Uh, that was Jacob Gentry. Um, so I met Alex Orr. Yeah, keep in mind that the, uh, the pool of filmmakers has just expanded exponentially over the last couple of years as a result of cheaper technology. And uh, um, so you are no longer... Uh, you know, well, special just well, because you make films. You know what? You need to be your okay. own cheerleader. I, but I'll, George Lucas pointed this out, you know, because th- this explosion is happening again, and it happened ten years ago, and it happened ten years prior to that. You know, yeah. it, it, you know, Super Eight technology revolutionized filmmaking. I don't, who remembers Kung Fu Rascals? Okay, so the, the point is, don't be intimidated. He's right, but don't be intimidated by that because the truth of the matter is, and I don't mean anyone in this room. There are now a billion new filmmakers. 99% of them suck. You don't. <laughs> and, and, and yes. it's, it's a joke. No, it's a joke. But that's the attitude you've got to go with it. And the fact of the matter is, if you get the film done, if you finish it, if you, if you realize your, your product, and lo and behold, the product you realize almost resembles what you thought you were making to begin with, you're doing better than 99.9% of the other people out there. So don't right. stop. But, Do it. This film looks like 50% of what I had in my head. My last movie... Look pretty dead on. I mean, it was but but what you're trying to convince people to do not only is to spend money on your film, which would be nice, but to get them to spend time to watch it, and that's the big sell. Okay, and so the people who are put, getting movies out there and and their crap um, are doing that on the sheer uh, uh, power of their own will over others. Um, so you know, I'm just saying you, you have to you you have to be. Your own children in every way, and you have to be annoying like uh, like uh, one huge point we haven't covered yet. Right? There's one huge point here we haven't covered though. There's just, there's the mentality of do I need stars in my movie? And everybody says no. You're making a low budget movies. I'm going to tell you now. When you go to distribute your movie, if your movie's got Tom in it, 
Somebody's going to go, hey, I know who that guy is. That's why I made movies with Tom for a long time. Anyway, I still want to. That's only because Tom Sabine doesn't <laughs> mean it. But I'm not saying you have to have it in there, but trust me, when it comes to distributors, they want to know who's in it. That's the first question I'll ask. Now they won't even ask you what it's shot on. It used to be what's it shot on. Now it's just who's in it. And if nobody's in it, they might still look at it. But if somebody's in it, they're going to take it a little more seriously. Hey, isn't that I, amazing, by the way? Yeah, right. It used to be, you know, but it used to be that, that if you didn't shoot on 35 or at least 16, yeah, they, they weren't care. Now, no one cares. Right, they don't care what you shoot on. Okay. So the technology wipes Actually, that out. Actually, they do care. Well, they care, but there's a level now of at least they'll look at it. I have which, a client so. shooting at a red who's losing money because his clients want him to shoot on the 5D. Oh no! Yes, yes, <laughs> because they think it's more avant-garde. <laughs> so, I'm not talking about weirdo used car systems. I'm talking about hospitals in Dallas. I'm talking about um, I'm talking about life insurance companies oh, like God. Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Well, let me, okay. I just want to say though the reason that he and I work together is because I I, just, I, movie. I send him I, I call him on the phone and, and said I want to work with you. Movie. He knew who I was, so go find the people you want to work with. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the list goes on. Ten years ago, we started a, uh, a science fiction movie called Starship Two. Uh, well, maybe nine years ago. We're getting to ten. Um, it's not done yet. It was shot on DV. It's been up res to HD and all that. The only reason why it is going to sell is because we have um, John Aston, Richard Biggs, Jason Carter, and we got them all because they just happened to be in the area at the time and we were able to work out some, some good deals. You can cast your movie from the guests at this show. When I, yeah, when I did when I did Vicious, when I did when I did Vicious with Tom, I needed Spring Stevens, and so uh, she was coming here, so I made sure my schedule was that we started the day after DragonCon. They flew her in, they flew her out, and I used her for a day. And remember, and, and they paid for you in and out too, so and I didn't have to pay for that, and that was on purpose. It worked. Yeah, I'm gonna go. But would you mind just please stay seated so we can get out? <laughs>